So let's discuss on the vapor pressure of a liquid solution. So here is the index. I'm going to talk about the vapor pressure of liquid liquid solution. Raoult's law as a special case of Henry's law. Vapor pressure of solutions of solids and liquids. These areas I'm going to discuss now. I'm trying to show you the solids are dissolving in liquid. How is it? It's good, right? Let's move on. The liquid solutions are formed when solvent is a liquid. The solid can be a gas, a liquid or a solid. So we shall discuss the solutions of liquids and solids in a liquid. Such solutions may contain one or more volatile compounds. The liquid solvent is volatile. The solid may or may not be volatile. Let's discuss the properties of only binary solution that is the solution containing two components namely the solution liquids in liquids or solids in liquids. Let's consider a binary solution of two volatile liquids and denote the two compounds as 1 and 2. When taken in a closed vessel, both the components would evaporate and eventually an equilibrium would be established between the vapor phase and the liquid phase. Let the total vapor pressure at this stage be P total. P1 and P2 be the partial vapor pressures of the two components 1 and 2 respectively. These partial pressures are related to the mole fraction x1 and x2 of the two components 1 and 2 respectively. So vapor pressure of liquid liquid solutions. The French chemist Francois and Marte Rauls gave the quantitative relationship between them. This relationship is called as a Robert's law. Robert's law which states that for a solution of volatile liquids, the partial vapor pressure of each component in the solution is directly proportional to the mole fraction. Thus for component 1, P1 directly proportional to X1 and P1 is equal to P1 naught is directly proportional to X1. Where P1 naught is the vapor pressure of pure component 1 at the same temperature. Similarly for component 2, it's a P2 is equal to P2 naught directly proportional to X2. So here is Dalton. According to Dalton's law of partial pressure, the total pressure over the solution phase in the container will be the sum of the partial pressure of the component of the solution. And it is given as P total is equal to P1 plus P2. So substituting the values of P1 and P2, we get P total is equal to X1 into P0 dash, P1 dash plus X2 into P2 dash or P2 theta. So P total is equal to 1 minus X2 into P1 0 plus X2 into P2 0. So P total is equal to P1 naught. I took my P2, so X2 out, you got P2 0 minus P10 into X2. So here is the condition for this equation. The total vapor pressure of the over the solution can be related to the mole fraction of any one component. Here is P1. P2 and P total. So the total vapor pressure or vapor pressure over the solution varies linearly with the mole fraction of the component 2. So depending on the vapor pressure of the pure components 1 and 2, the total vapor pressure over the solution decreases or increases with the increase of the mole fraction of component 1.
a plot of P1 or P2 versus the mole fraction x1 and x2 for your solution gives a linear plot as shown. So these lines of 1 and 2 pass through the points respectively when x1 and x2 are equal unity. Similarly the plot line 3 of p total versus x2 is also linear. The minimum value of p total is a p1 0 and the maximum value is a p2 0 assuming that the component 1 is less volatile than component 2. So p1 0 is less than p2 0. The composition of vapor phase in equilibrium with the solution is determined by the partial pressure of the components. If y1 and y2 are the mole fractions of the component 1 and 2 respectively in the vapor phase, then using Dalton's law of partial pressure, P1 is equal to y1 into P total and P2 is equal to y2 into P total. So in general, this is the formula. Pi is equal to Yi into P total.